Hello everybody, Steve here with another video. How is everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing great. And uh, before I start today's video, uh, I want to ask uh, my listeners something. I want to get some feedback. Um, I'm thinking about changing the video uh, format or the format for my videos. And um, currently what I do is you know, you'll hear me talk and I might have some text in the background, maybe an article, maybe some images, um, maybe even a scripture or two. But I was thinking about changing the format to where you would see my face. It, it would be a, a live recording, so to speak. And uh, a lot of people say that the videos come across as more personable when they can see a face. So I'm thinking about doing that. I don't know how photogenic I am, but I'd definitely be willing to try if you guys think you would get more benefit from that, if it would be a little more personable. So let me know in the comments what you think, and um, I will do so accordingly. You know, it really doesn't uh, matter to me one way or the other, but i just like to get some feedback and to see what you guys think. And as always, I appreciate always appreciate your feedback. I always like hearing from you. I always like interacting with you guys so that I can uh, understand what it is you need. If you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to leave them in the chat area. And I will definitely be glad to read them and respond when appropriate. So anyway, thank you for that. Please also subscribe when you get a chance. I'm trying to grow our audience here, grow our page. And uh, hopefully it, the page is beneficial to everyone. So I look forward to seeing you subscribe when you get a chance. So what we're going to talk about today is a question I've been asked by some. And that is whether the Bible speaks about narcissism or does the Bible actually talk about narcissism by name? And while it might not talk about narcissism by name, it does address it. And in some of my previous videos, I've given a few scriptures that either directly or indirectly apply to narcissism. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about an actual situation in the Bible that pretty much uh, describes what a narcissist is and what a narcissist does. And as I may have some listeners who aren't Christians or who aren't familiar with the Bible, let me just say this. One of the things that I do like about the Bible is that it basically speaks to the human condition. It basically tells it like it is. It doesn't sugarcoat anything. It doesn't make everyone that it writes about in the Bible uh, look good and fantastic and like superheroes. No, the Bible speaks to the human condition that we're all, all prone to faults, that we're all, all prone to failure uh, in this life. So that is one thing that I deeply admire about the Bible, among many others. What I'm going to talk about, uh, the story I'm going to talk about today is that of a young man named Absalom. Absalom was David's son, and we're going to pretty much follow a, 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 a pretty tragic tale of his life and of his family's life. And I believe within this story, you can see a pattern of narcissism and how it progressively gets worse. Now, I would suggest you read for yourself. The story of Absalom can be found in 2 Samuel, starting at the 13th chapter. And I believe it lasts maybe for about five chapters going into uh, chapter 18. So that's 2 Samuel um, chapter 13, and you can read from there for a few chapters. It's not a, a long read, but it's quite interesting, and I believe you will find it very enlightening. To give you a little backstory, uh, as I said, Absalom was one of David's sons. I believe he was the third son, and uh, David had uh, a few wives, and he had kids by by these these wives. And so right in the preceding chapter, we see that uh, King David, he was king by then. And many people know David from the story of David and Goliath and um, 
David, and of course Bathsheba. And that's pretty much in the preceding chapter, we find out what the situation was with David and Bathsheba. Bathsheba was wife to another man, somebody in David's army, and David became smitten with her. And while her husband was away at war, her and David had an affair. He saw her bathing from a rooftop and was smitten with her and basically didn't care that she was married. And uh, the two of them got together. And so once David realized that she was pregnant, I know it sounds bad. And David is supposed to be a hero, a champion of Israel. Once he found out that she was pregnant, he tried to have her husband killed by placing him in the front lines of battle. And of course, being in the front lines, a lot of times you will get killed. And that's what happened to Uriah. He was killed in battle. And so David could then take on his his wife with no problem. Or so he thought. God had other intentions. God knew what was going on and um, told the prophet Nathan to speak to him about it. And uh, David realized eventually that he did a terrible thing. And as a result, that child had died. And David took it really hard because, you know, he really loved Bathsheba and was looking forward to this child. And uh, but God had other intentions and that the child would be taken away at birth. And so after that, David had another son whom many people will know uh, by the name of Solomon. But uh, what we're going to talk about today is one of David's other sons, and his name is Absalom. So as I stated, I think Absalom was the third born. And then David also had a daughter whose name, whose name was Tamar. And then David also had another son whose name was Amnon. And so what happened was, um, for the most part, they were, you know, all half brothers, half sisters, because they had different mothers. And so Amnon was smitten with his own sister, Tamar. And unfortunately, what he did was he raped her. And I know that sounds detestable, but like I said, he was smitten with her, claimed to be in love with her. But when she when she rejected all of his advances, he started to hate her. And so Absalom uh, really loved his sister in the right way, of course. And when he found out that what Amnon did to her, he was enraged. As I'm sure any, any family member would be enraged. And even David, when he found out, was enraged. But unfortunately, it appears that David didn't take the right steps to rectify the situation. And so... Absalom figured that he would be the one who would exact a vengeance. And Absalom plotted and waited two whole years for, you know, to carry out the plot. And what he eventually did was he murdered his brother Amnon. He murdered his brother Amnon. And so you can see a lot of family drama in this. You can see the makings of uh, why this would be a story that is laced with narcissism. So after after Absalom murdered his, his brother, he fled for three years to the country of his mother, I believe, and stayed with the king of that country. I believe it was there that Absalom's narcissism really began to take place, or to take root. Because uh, the story lets us know that As Absalom was a very handsome guy. He was well liked by the people. He was a people person. He related well with people. He had what they would say, what we would say now is movie star looks. And he had leadership qualities. And he was probably voted most likely to succeed. And all of these things uh, gave Amnon a really high opinion of himself and uh, contributed to his narcissistic tendencies. So while he was in his self-opposed exile, in uh, uh, he roomed with the king of that country. And the story even lets us know that David wanted to see him 
he had basically gotten over the fact that he killed Amnon, but and wanted to see him. His heart long, longed to see uh, his son. But Absalom had other ideas, and I think he was an opportunist. So that when he finally did come back, not only was he not grateful for coming back, he also started plotting how he could take over the throne from David. You see, in his mind, David was becoming old. He was becoming incapable. Absalom probably, and it doesn't say this, but Absalom probably resented that David didn't do enough when Amnon uh, murdered, uh, when Amnon raped his sister. So he probably had all kinds of uh, bitter animosity. And as we already can tell from the story, he held on to that animosity for, for two years before he murdered his brother Amnon. And so somewhere along the line, because he was a good talker, people related to him well, he started to people to downplay his father, his tactics, how he talked to people, and started to build up himself. And as many of you can probably attest to that narcissists are opportunists. Narcissists seem like they are righteous and good people and have only good intentions, but that is far from the case. The narcissist is always looking for weaknesses, and this is what exactly what Absalom did. He was looking at for weaknesses within his father's um, personality, within his father's way of doing things. And even though David was a good king, Amnon was such a good orator, just knew how to talk to people, knew how to explain things, knew how to get people to see his point of view. So that even all of the great things that David had done, Absalom, in his narcissistic fervor, was able to make people look negatively on David so as to promote himself. And that's eventually what he did. He eventually became king and so much so that the people, half the people turned against David and David actually had to flee his own country. Absalom, rather than being repentant, seeking forgiveness and restoration with his family, took another route. And isn't this what narcissists do on a regular basis? They do not take responsibility for their own actions and they blame their actions on somebody else, as I'm sure Absalom blamed David for the cause of all of the family issues. And David may in fact have been partially to blame for a lot of the stuff that happened. But what the narcissist do, will do is that they will use these things against you. And while they may want you to forgive them, they are not forgiving of your misdeeds. They're not forgive, forgiving of your mistakes. And so, the narcissist will sometimes behind your back do things that you don't even know that they're doing. And at the very least, they will play the psychological manipulation. And they will begin to get others against you, as Absalom did with, uh, with David. And before you know it, either they will dethrone you or they will carry your name through the mud, all with the desired... Um, achievement of making themselves look good at your expense. So this is what Absalom did to his own father, David. He had a lot of enablers. A lot of the people that follow him could be considered enablers because they did not dissuade him from doing what he did. And the result was, you know, a lot of downfall in Israel and Israel became because of it, Israel became weaker in the eyes of many. To make a long story short, Absalom ruled um, for a period of time, but eventually David came back and Absalom was killed. There's a whole nother story how Absalom was killed, but needless to say that for most narcissists, I would say, as a matter of fact, I don't know any narcissist that I've known for any length of time whose end or, you know, later years in life do not end well. I don't know any narcissist who has been 
really, really narcissistic throughout their whole life. I don't know any that are happy, any that, that are content in their old age, any that, that, that age gracefully. They're always in a state of discontent. They're always grumpy. They're always mean uh, because for the most part, they they draw away they they draw out in themselves uh any kind of a desire to be around them um good people tend not to stay around narcissists unless they are enablers and a narcissist often ends up alone bitter uh angry and generally not pleasant people so you know, unfortunately, I don't wish this on anybody, but unfortunately, narcissism usually turns people away, especially as people grow and understand that this person, you know, has this this thing called narcissism and people tend not to want to be around them. If they were narcissistic and they had kids who are not narcissistic, the kids tend not to be around them and so forth and so on. You get the idea. So it didn't went in well for Absalom. His narcissism at some point took over his life and he he became he became twisted and, and, and evil. So my friends, I say all that to say this that narcissism can be a very deadly thing if left unchecked. And when I say left unchecked, I mean if if you know, a person that doesn't know about narcissism and is just allowing the person who is narcissistic to have their way and to just go unfettered and unchecked, the the end will not be good. It's just going to be a life of pain and misery and suffering. And uh, what we all need to do is those of us who do have narcissists in our lives and know people who have narcissists in their lives, we need to pray for them. We need to talk to them. And we need to either teach ourselves all we can about narcissism uh, or teach or, or admonish somebody you know who is in a relationship with a narcissist, you know, whether it's a parent, a sibling, a spouse, whatever the case might be, a friend, coworker, learn about it, teach them about it so that we'll be able to help them to be able to cope with the situation and more importantly, to pray about it, that God will give them grace and knowledge and wisdom on how to deal with the situation in their own lives. So thank you. I know this one is a little long, but I wanted to relate this story. There are several others in the Bible that I will probably talk about in future uh, future videos. But for now, read the story of Absalom in 2 Samuel, the 13th chapter. You'll find it a very interesting read. And hopefully you'll, you'll be able to uh, derive the narcissistic tendencies in, in Absalom for yourself. And hopefully it will help you in your life to understand uh, how to deal properly with, with narcissists. So anyway, thank you. God bless you. Don't forget to let me know what you're thinking about um, me changing the format of the videos. Uh, leave a message, leave a comment, subscribe. So God bless you, and I'll see you next time.